Good morning. Um, by the way, it is 2B3M. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to be here with all of you at the Women in Tech Summit. It's so inspiring to look out and see thousands of curious minds. You know, with this group of people, I have no doubt that we can solve any challenge that's put in front of us, because that's what it's about, solving problems. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of my journey, and I call it blooming from STEM. Because while I have a chemistry and a chemical engineering background, I've used that problem-solving mentality throughout my career in four countries and 15 different types of roles, from technical to business to legal. So I will share with you along that journey how my solid foundation in STEM opened up countless opportunities, and it can do the same for you. So why did I pick Bloom from STEM? And I'm going to talk about the life journey of a rose. Because I think that a rose is a universal flower. For me, it represents passion, resilience, authenticity. And so you know when a rose is a rose, it doesn't try to be anything else. And I'm going to talk about how that's very important for all of us. So I'm going to talk about four parts in this journey. Planting the seeds, first buds, coming to full bloom, and then what is the care and maintenance that you have to continually have to keep blooming? Because it doesn't happen just you're taking it for granted. And all along the way, there are thorns. So we have to bloom despite the thorns. And I think you've seen that theme come up again and again in this morning's talk. So this is me. These are my planting the seeds. This is my, uh, I'll talk about my early interest in STEM. That's me trying to look very academic. I was born in England. I'm of Indian heritage, and I grew up in Canada. So I have a lot of different experiences and countries and cultures. I loved math and science. I just, I enjoyed it, I wanted to do, go to school, I wanted to do my homework, I really took a, a liking to it. I also come from an Indian heritage family. The expectations were extremely high. You were expected to be a doctor. I'm not a doctor, so we'll talk about where I did go and, and, and that's okay. My father defined some core family values that we think about, and those are compassion, integrity, love, and self-reliance. You know, some people think that compassion is a soft skill, like, oh, come on, who needs that? In the world today, compassion and empathy are a competitive advantage. This world needs more of it for us to be successful. And self-reliance, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I had to learn to be self-reliant because many things were done for me until I went to university. So I had to learn that. You know, it was in school, I had lots of teachers that encouraged me and, and tried to stretch me. And so I started to get some recognition with awards. And I liked that feeling of winning. So I've tried to keep that with hard work, you can continue to win. But it's not just hard work. That's one of the basic ingredients. And then when I graduated um, to go to university, right? So my, my expectation was, well, you're going to be a doctor. So you can study chemistry as your first degree, and then you can go to med school. I didn't want to be a doctor. I loved math, and I loved science. So then it was, OK, you can be a dentist. I don't want to be a, I mean, it's great. I, it was just not for me. What I found was I had friends that talked about engineering, and that was interesting to me. Solving problems, you know, taking challenges, putting all the pieces together, and trying to figure out how to, how to come out with a solution. So I finished my chemistry degree, and I went into chemical engineering. Nobody in my, uh, no, none of the women in my family anywhere in the world were engineers. So my father said, great. 
because my grandfather was an engineer. My mother said, oh my goodness, who will marry you? <laughs> I will fast forward that everything works out the way it's supposed to. So planting the seeds is about creating an environment where people can start to deliver those first buds and then bloom. It doesn't happen just on its own, right? So when you get to be part of that environment for someone, step into it because people will do that for you. First buds. So in my early career, that's me in the lab at 3M Canada with my R&D uh, colleagues having fun at work and enjoying the work that we were doing. When I started at 3M, I interviewed and, and I was always apologizing for my strong marks. And I got the job and the PhD scientist that hired me, he said, I never want to hear you apologize for your good work again. And I've never done it since. So just having that, that somebody tell you that, hey, you don't need to do this. Be proud of what you do. Don't be arrogant. Nobody likes arrogance. But be proud of what you do. And later in my career, I, I moved into sales. I moved into technical service. And I moved into Six Sigma. Six Sigma is a methodology for continuous improvement. For someone who's got a STEM background, when you want to talk about process improvement, you want to talk about Y is a function of X, using data, thinking about entitlement, that's right in your sweet spot. But I got to apply Six Sigma methodology to sales, to customer problems. And it was the best leadership development experience that I've had so far in my career. So starting with a foundation in STEM, it was easy for me to say yes to lots of different opportunities for different reasons. I got a chance to go to India and work with customers in India on solving problems in their manufacturing sites, all in the interest of helping customers and gaining business. It was an incredibly exciting opportunity. And you know, no, no flower buds without support. I have a fantastic partner in my husband who every time we were asked to move, so four times, three different countries, he absolutely said, yes, let's do it. Right? And that's our daughter in the middle who now sees that this is the way that life is. So she can do whatever it is that she wants. So having that support system is very critical. So when we think of, oh, something else. OK, when we think about those first buds, it's also not about trying to fit a mold. When roses grow, we want to create an environment that they can bloom however they need to bloom, not in a certain shape, in a certain container, in a certain way. And that's important. That's about authenticity. So when we talk about full bloom, full bloom doesn't mean you've arrived. Full bloom means just that you've taken those buds and you've amplified what you've become, OK? And when we talk about full bloom, I don't believe you get anywhere alone. It's all about collaboration and support. Support of your friends, support of your family, support of your peers, support of your supervisors, and it's a two-way street. So as I've gone through my career, I've received a lot of support, and I've given a lot of support. The picture on the left is at a recent women's leadership event where I brought my daughter, who's in the middle, because I want her to see what it is that the topics of the day are, what kind of things women are doing so she can continue to be inspired. In the middle, I talk about courage. To really bloom, to really unleash your potential, you have to have courage. That picture is very special to me. I spent three years as the managing director of 3M Indonesia, and that's at one of the largest copper and gold mines in the world. And the next to me is our customer. And nobody wanted to go to that mine because it was dangerous. You would take a plane, you would take a boat, and then you would either take a helicopter, or an armored convoy. 
and I got to go in an armored convoy every time. But I knew it was important for my team to see that as a leader, I was willing to go where I asked them to go, for our customers to see that we cared about their business. So courage is really important. Everybody said, you shouldn't go there. That, that's not the right place for you. And my answer is, how about I decide what's the right place for me? And if I need your support, if I need some help, I will ask you for it. I'm not afraid to ask. So, you know, those are the times where you really have to have courage. And then finally, authenticity. You do not have to be anyone else. Blooming in your journey is about using your superpower. Everybody in this room has a unique superpower, a strength that makes you special. And you need to know what that is. And you need to not hide it. You need to let it, let it really be out there. You know, and be you. This is not, you know, people say, well, you know, you, you got to compete with everybody. So you've got to be like this or you've got to be like that. There is room in this world for every one of us. And we don't want to be the same. If we don't bring what's different and unique about each person, we will not advance as a, as a, as a planet, as a, as a as human species. So really having the courage to be you is critical. So, you know, in life, when you're going to have full bloom, there's going to be things that, that help you along the way. And I want to talk a little bit about what those are. Because once a rose blooms, it doesn't bloom forever, right? So this, this premise that we can be perfect all the time and look and, you know, perform and deliver, you need to rest. You re need to renew. And sometimes there will be conditions that make you, that you fail. But I'll tell you what, if you haven't failed, you're not ready for the next big thing. The number one thing I ask people when I interview them in my business, and my business is one of the top three businesses of 3M, is tell me about when you failed and tell me what you learned from it. And tell me what you're going to do differently. That's a very different interview question than tell me about all your successes. Tell me about everything you did right. The world is very volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. If you haven't failed and you haven't learned from it, you're going to be in for a very harsh reality, right? So those are the kind of things that we're looking for, that I encourage you to, to lean into to challenges and okay to fail. Learn something from it and move on. So pruning care and maintenance so you can continue to bloom again, right? Roses bloom, then they bloom again, and they bloom again. So like a rose bush, a fulfilling stem, uh, STEM career, or from STEM, requires continual care and maintenance. So I'll leave you with these, these seven things. In your journey, you never really get there. You have to be a continuous learner. I am learning every day. If I'm not learning, something is wrong. I'm not spending my time wisely if I'm not learning. Number two, be open to change. This group may be ready for change, but instead of waiting for it, step into it. If our business is doing well or not well, I, we want to be inside understanding what's driving that. And I encourage you to do that all the time. If you see a challenging project, there are people that would say, well, I don't want to take that on because I don't know if I can be successful. If it's challenging, what if you are successful? Making sure you step up to challenging projects and get the right people around you to be successful. Nobody expects one person to solve every problem. The beauty of what we have is there's so much collective brilliance that we just have to bring together and ask for that help. Embracing new opportunities. I've had 15 different roles in my career so far in four countries. And it's because I've said yes more than I've said no. 
When someone came to me and said, we think you might be, you know, might be good for this role. That might be interesting. And I'd have people around me that says, well, you've never done that. You might fail. Okay. But what if I learn, what if I can, what if I can do it? And I've had people around me that said, go for it. We're with you. If it doesn't work, so what? You can do something else in three. So really saying yes more than you say no. And here's the thing. It says persist with grit, right? That's resilience. When things don't work, it's okay to feel bad. And then you've got to get on with it. You've got to say, okay, now what? What are my options? So really about having that support network around you, your friends, advisors, people that you learn from every day. Learning from feedback. The only thing I've learned to say when someone gives me feedback that I don't like is thank you. It's important for you to get positive feedback. It's important for you to get constructive feedback on what could be better. And it's important to take that and think about it. Not reject that somebody could be, oh, they're just against me. They may have thought of something that I haven't. Very welcome to, to consider that and grow stronger from it. And then on the last one, in seeing others' success, be inspired to be your best. Back to help each other. There is room for everybody who is here today and those who are not to be successful, to contribute, and help each other. We do it together. We don't do it alone. Okay? So I will leave you with a quote from a Canadian uh, philosopher since I grew up in Canada. And this per, uh, Machona Delwayo said, be like a rose. No matter how many thorns you encounter in life, continue to bloom. So I wish you a wonderful conference. You are all very talented people. I'm so inspired. I'm going to take a selfie and send it to my 12-year-old so she can see what's ahead of her. And I wish you all the best in your journey. Thank you very much.